Hello, I'm Josh Hurley, and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services Microsoft Platform team. Today, I'd like to show you the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio, and then build a simple .NET Core application that references the AWS SDK for .NET via NuGet packages. Let's get started. First, let's talk about dependencies. You'll need Visual Studio. I happen to have Visual Studio 2019 Enterprise Edition installed but we support earlier versions and other editions of Visual Studio. For a complete list, you can visit the setting up AWS toolkit for Visual Studio displayed on the screen. You also need an AWS account. For security, we recommend not using the root account. Instead, create a new IAM user under your account. Please note, you'll need to assign permissions to that new user for each of the services that you'll use. First, let's install the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio. Since I have Visual Studio 2019, I'm gonna click on the first button. Then click on the download button. After you've installed the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio, you can open up Visual Studio and look at the AWS Explorer. If you open up Visual Studio and it's not displaying the AWS Explorer, go up to view and click on AWS Explorer. The next step is to create a new account profile for your machine. Click on the new account profile icon and provide the access key ID, secret access key, and account number. Remember, you shouldn't use your root account information. Instead, use an IM user account. Now that you've created a new account profile, let's review the AWS Explorer. This tool can help you manage some of the most common developer resources like Amazon S3 buckets and Amazon DynamoDB tables. If you created a new IM user account for the account profile, you'll need to provide permissions for each of these services you'd like to access. I've gone ahead and given the user I created access to both Amazon DynamoDB and Amazon SQS so that we can use it later when we create our application. Next, let's create an Amazon DynamoDB table. I'm going to right click on Amazon Dynamo DB and click on create table. Type in the table name and a hash key ID. The other values I'm going to leave empty. Likely when you're creating your own for a production application, you'll fill those values in and I'll hit create. And this will work with the API and create the contact table for me. Next, I'm gonna go down to Amazon SQS, right click on it, click on create queue, provide a name. And again, I'm gonna use the default values here. Hit okay. Next, let's create our web application. Go to file new project, ASP.NET core web application. Type in a name. I'm gonna choose an MVC project. Next, let's add the NuGet references for our solution. Right-click on solution, go to manage NuGet packages for solution. And we'll search for AWS SDK. First one we're gonna reference is the AWS SDK.core. Add that to our project. Next, we'll add the Amazon DynamoDB package. For dependency injection support, we'll need to add the SDK extensions for .NET Core. And that's AWS SDK dot extensions dot .NET Core dot setup. Next, 
Next, we'll add the reference for AWS logger ASP.NET Core. And finally, we'll add the AWS SDK SQS package. I've added some code to our sample application. Let's take a look. First, I added a new controller called contact controller. It has two actions, a get that returns the view and a post that handles the contact form post. Ultimately, what it does is it writes to a queue and to a log file that's stored in CloudWatch logs. I have a model that supports the contact form, which is a series of string properties. Created a contact queue service that has the code that actually writes to the queue. In it, we create a send message request, provide the URL for the queue and the body of the message. In app settings JSON, we have logging configuration information. This is for the CloudWatch logs, as well as the value for the queue URL. Because I've gone through the AWS Elastic Beanstalk wizard, it's created a JSON file that contains all the responses that I made while going through the wizard. I have a static class that contains a few helper functions. In the program class, I add in the logging provider for AWS. And in the startup class, I add in references to AWS services, as well as the dependency injection for the contact queue service I created. And in the configure method, I define how the log information will be formatted when it's written out to CloudWatch logs. Let's go ahead and deploy those changes. I'm going to right click on the application, click on publish to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. I'm going to select the redeploy option. I have this available because I went through the wizard once already to do the initial deployment. I'm going to select the dev environment, hit next. And I'm going to go with the default options. Now, while we're waiting for that to deploy, we can watch the status by going to AWS Elastic Beanstalk in our AWS Explorer, and then go to our contact sample app. In here, we can see the status as it deploys. You can hit the refresh button to get the latest status. We can drill down to the specific instance. And we see that it's completed. Let's click on the URL to launch the application. And let's give it a test drive. So this is the contact form that I'd created. And if I put in some information here, and click Create. And what that's done is it's added that contact form to the queue and logged the details of the contact form that was added to the queue. And let's add uh, another person.
All right. Now let's take a look at our queue. And we can do that right from our AWS Explorer. To view the messages, double click on Amazon SQS and then double click on contact queue. You'll see three messages in there, two of which we just created. And you can double click on any of the messages to view details about the message. And to view the application logs, we can go to the AWS console, go to the CloudWatch logs, find your log group and pick a log stream. Here's some examples of what we were logging earlier. I've refactored the application to include a DynamoDB table that we had created earlier in the demo. Let's take a look at the code. We go to controllers and contact controllers. You'll see now I'm referencing a new service called contact service. And if we take a look at that, what this does is it calls two new repositories I created, one's for the queue and one's for DynamoDB. And if we open up the repository, For contact DB repository, what I have in here are references to DynamoDB, and it has an add method that takes the contact form and an ID. We build the request, and then we put it to DynamoDB. We log anything that is not a 200 HTTP status. The other repository is for the queue. Basically, it's the same code that we had before and what we were calling the contact queue service. Next, let's look at app settings.json. I've added in two things, one a region reference, so that when we make our DynamoDB call, it knows what region it's in, and then a name value pair for the contact table name. Next, let's go to startup. Added in those repositories for dependency injection resolution, and then updated the service name. And let's take a look at this in action. We'll open up the URL, go to contact, fill out the form, And let's take a look to make sure everything was saved properly. We'll go to our DynamoDB contact table. And we see the record that we created with the various attributes related to the contact form. In SQS, we have our message, which is now just the contact ID instead of the whole contact form. And that wraps up the presentation. If you'd like more information on the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio, visit the first URL on the screen. If you'd like more information on the .NET SDK, visit the second URL. And finally, visit the third URL for more information on programming with .NET on AWS. Thank you for watching.